All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, we will now be doing the viewer questions. We've taken care of uh, top computational players. We've taken care of world players, hopefully. Um, I'm sure we'll have a ton of people out, but uh, uh, let's hope not. So we've taken care of that. Now we're going on to the viewer questions. Like I mentioned, go ahead and ask them on our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash Pokemon, and we'll answer as many of them as we can. So uh, let's get started. And let me just find the most the first one for the night. All right, here we go. Caleb Sodding Mullins asks, uh, what do we think is going to be the best version of Eels after rotation? And also, what do we think is going to be the cheapest deck after rotation that's Tier 1? And I'm sure that when he means Tier 1, he means uh, a very competitive deck. Uh, a deck that can, you know, legitimately win a tournament. So, I honestly haven't taken a look into uh, post-rotation decks. Um, has anybody actually done that? 100% uh, of my attention has been on Worlds, so I'm sorry. Uh, I've played like 10 games with the new format, so I have okay. a little bit of insight. Uh, I think the best version of Eels is the uh, the one with Mewtwo's and DCEs uh, with Zekrom and uh, like a Raikou, which is it's almost exactly the same thing except it has like a bunch of switch in it, just four switch since you need to be able to switch a lot more often and you can't junk arm. But uh, that worked pretty well against the uh, the Darkrai deck that I played against or not Darkrai uh, Hydreigon deck yeah Darkrai Hydreigon deck that worked pretty well against that it was consistently winning so I mean that seemed like the most logical list okay um, you mentioned that you uh, uh, you were playing pretty much the same one you were playing you know before rotation aside from Junk Arm is there any cards that you feel like you missed that I missed yeah, like cards that you could um, many more because Tool Scrapper seemed like a really solid card. Um, get a, gets uh, rid of the I'm talking about cards that were rotated. Cards that oh, were rotated oh, that cards are not that missed. Um, obviously, Pont is a huge okay. card. That's uh, Dual Ball is also oh, really? very the deck's good. Intact, then. What? The deck's basically intact still. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, but the dual the balls are gone, everybody. so you have to run like uh, like four level balls. Yeah, that's but it, it works that's out, and you oh the ultra balls are really good too. And do you as do you? I mean, I'm assuming you're the only one that's actually playtest the new format. Uh, do you feel like do you know what the cheapest one of the cheapest best decks is going to be for well most affordable best decks for for your players? Um, I think the most affordable one would be the eels, just because. All the cards in there are pretty cheap, except for, um, like Raikou, maybe I guess Raikou. Catcher, Raikou. Raikou would be Mewtwo. the most expensive card, but Mewtwo's I don't really. Yeah, yeah Mewtwo's in a ten. Uh, Catcher is only like eight. The eels itself aren't very much. Um, yeah, uh, that has to be the cheapest one. Okay. Okay. Hopefully that helps somebody out. Um, let's see what the next question is. <laughs> All right, Michael Hopkins wants to know if any of us were in a school band when we were younger, and if so, what instrument we played, and uh, if I enjoyed it. If we enjoyed it. I always wanted to learn how to play the guitar. Always from day one, never actually learned, and that's uh, it's always been bugging me. That actually bugs me to this day. I always think about it, like, man, I would have been such a good guitarist. I played the air guitar like nobody's business. Um, but no, I, no, I never actually did any type of uh, a band or even choirs or choral air, none of that. Uh, I played flute for a year. <laughs> Way back when, <laughs> the uh, harmonica. And <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that was it. That was it. Uh, I don't know. I just, I was just like um, the one with the apple thing. Okay. Uh, no idea what that is, but that's. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was in a chorus in middle school, but before that, uh, from third grade to fifth grade, I was in the uh, the elementary school band, and I played the saxophone. Ooh. <laughs> I was gonna like, read and everything. <laughs> I was uh, I felt like quite the baller playing my saxophone like every day. Oh, it was so great! I was completely awful and didn't know what I was doing, but it was like so much fun to play that thing. All right, all right. Uh, what about you? No, like Krim, I had uh, dreams of playing the guitar, but Kelly kind of beat me into submission, and she didn't <laughs> stop until my aspirations were dead. So. No guitar for me. Do you have any dreams anymore? Any any hopes? Any aspirations? Uh, yeah. No, none. Nothing. No, I, I get beaten if I try. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, we're not musically inclined. Matter of fact, I think there's a video that people just linked um, of Pram <laughs> actually singing. <laughs> nice hair. So that's proof that... <laughs> yeah, I know. He does have nice hair there. Uh, that's proof that uh, we're not musically inclined. <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um... <laughs> Alex Yuminik uh, asks, uh, what, what's our favorite tournament to go to? Not necessarily guarding the level of prestige. Uh, so basically just a, a tournament that's like near and dear to our hearts um, has, should have nothing to do with like the fact that you can become world champion or anything like that. Favorite tournament to go to? Hmm, that's a tough one. Uh, I, I think probably Nationals, just because I enjoy meeting up with everyone and all that stuff. Like, things I can do outside the tournament. Okay. Worlds is like a close second though, because it's like same reasons, but less people. Mhm. Mm Good point, Drew. And uh, I I've always had a thing for Ohio State. I mean, back when everyone in Ohio was competing, it was a really tough tournament. You had Cena, Full of Mondek, Tom, everyone at the same time. It was always a really tough tournament, and there was a a time period where either me or Tom was the only one that won the tournament until very recently, like two or three years ago. So that's always been a huge tournament for me. I love all my Ohio State first place trophies. They're probably the most of me besides my nationals top two. So Ohio State, baby, woo! Uh, did you go to Ohio State, sister? I did not. <laughs> I Wasn't it like, uh, like a short hop away from your bed? Yeah. I mean, I went over. <laughs> I went over and said hi to everybody, but... I did not compete. Didn't get so. to play it. Just a uh, uh, tough life I lead. <laughs> I wish I hadn't changed that picture. I wish I hadn't unfrozen your camera. But, uh, Potter, what about you? Uh, I think my favorite tournament to go to is Worlds. Uh, just all the people coming together from around the world and seeing all these different types of people from countries that I've never been to before is just really cool. And uh, usually there's most of the people that I hang out with but it always it's it's a bit disappointing that I don't get to see all the people that I see at nationals, and that's why my nationals is a really close second for me. Yeah, like me. Um, yeah. Well. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> you know what? I'm not gonna mention. I mean, obviously, for for the reasons we've all mentioned, it, nationals is by far my favorite tournament to attend. Um, just the idea of like actually traveling, you know, to the east when I'm, you know, from the west and hanging out with all my friends and just, you know, being with them for a week is awesome. Um, same thing applies with worlds. But if I want to mention a non-nationals or worlds level tournament, um, I really like attending things like uh, like the city championships uh, in like the SoCal area and and stuff like that, only because they're they're a lot more like um, they're the exact opposite of nationals. They're you know a lot more homier like. You, you get to hang out with people that you don't necessarily get to hang out with uh, all the time, but you, you you get to have a lot more uh, personal conversations with these guys and get to know them better because you don't, you know, at least personally, I, I, I do have to sp spread my time between a lot of people uh, at the major tournaments because, I mean, first of all, the top cut, and second of all, because I, I'm fortunate enough to have a lot of friends that play a, at a national level. So um, I do like the, the personal feeling that, City championships give, but everything has to do with you know with the amount of people that you're or with the people that you're hanging out with. I think is the the thing that we're trying to get at the most. Um, the tournament itself is cool, and I love you know competing and I love playing at a high level. But uh, what I love the most by far is hanging out with friends and and uh, that, that social atmosphere of it. So let's see here. Geo Edge asks for tonight's show: What deck do we think is the worst deck to play going into Worlds, and what we think is uh, an overlooked tech card? Um, so let's see. The worst deck to play, in my opinion, is Darkrai, uh, a straight Darkrai variant. Um, I just feel like it's in a bad spot when you when you think about the metagame, when you think about things like um, like the Vileplume decks, which honestly give it fits and stuff like that. I just don't feel like it's a good deck to play. Um, as far as Overlook tech, uh, I don't play enough to honestly know about it. Actually, I haven't played since Nationals, uh, so I guess I'll have to pass that one on to you guys. Uh, I guess I'll quote uh, the response, Adam Keebler, <laughs> who said, The worst X quad Magikarp. <laughs> 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 All right. 
uh, by far, and most overlooked tech. Uh, I guess I'll give a straight up answer with this one. I don't know if it's overlooked, but it might be underplayed, which would be Lost Remover. Because I think a lot of people are going to be like, that's going to be like their 61st card. And they're going to be like, how bad do I want to be Kling Kling? Well, if everyone else runs Lost Remover for me, I won't need to run this card, thus I won't run it. And if then if a bunch of people have that same thought process, they just won't run it. So, yeah. Good answer. Uh, what about you, Potter? Um, most, the worst deck, um, I would probably say is, uh, um, Vanillix. Uh, <laughs> just because it, it does, it does everything that, I mean, Celagor does everything Vanillix does, except it does it better, and it doesn't allow them, like, any knockouts or any attacks in between paralyzing them, uh, most of the time. Uh, so Vanillix just seems like the worst choice among the decks that are played, and if that's not really played, then my bad. And, and the, uh, I think the most overlooked tech is Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball is just, seems to be so useful in every deck, and the discarding two cards might hurt, but we're already discarding two cards for Junk Arm, so it, it's not really that bad, and a lot of times discarding, like, two Darks or two Lightnings are, is huge, because then you get them in the discard without having to use a Juniper or anything like that, or waste a Trainer card so you can use a Junk Arm. Ultra Ball, I could see, make a huge, like, resurgence in a, in a world's winning deck list. Um, most people wouldn't consider Ultra Ball a tech, but I think I understand what you're trying to say. It's just an underused card compared to, uh, compared to its other, you know, potential answer, or potential yeah. options. Okay. Yeah. Um, Drew, what do you think? <sighs> Worst deck, I think, is like straight fighting, like that Terrakion Landers type deck. I think that's horrible. You're not going to win very many rounds with that. Um, best tech, I probably have to agree with Pram here. I think Lost Remover is good in almost every matchup, and it's really underplayed. So, I mean, you saw Nationals. John Roberts won Nationals because of it, so. I'd really like to see more Lost Removers out there. All right. Um, good answers. Now, uh, uh, Colin Brinkmeyer at, said, upon seeing the Max Potion V2 version of Eels, do you uh, do well at Nationals? Do you think that it's the superior version of Eels? Uh, and will it do better at Worlds? That's a good, yeah, that's a good question. So, um, going with Max Potion and Mewtwo in Eels, uh, do you guys feel like that might be the plan? Yeah. Yes and yes. We'll go with uh, all of you guys. All right. Yeah. No. Uh, resounding yes. What about you? All right, Potter. Why? Um, I I think uh, the Terrakian version is better. I <laughs> I still think Darkrai is important and to be able to knock out with one hit. And I know Mewtwo's big. Like just I would just play a third Mewtwo, even without DC. And I think that'll be enough to deal with their aggressive Mewtwo's. Okay. Good answer. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, Bert Wolters, which decks are you uh, testing against for Worlds? What's your What's your testing gauntlet? Uh, consist of guys. Are you guys actually testing for Worlds? I guess is the better. Question. Yeah, dog. I test every day. What? Yeah. I test everything, man. I got the Kling Kling. I got the status decks. I got Mewtwo, Darkrai, Straight Darkrai, CMT. And Zekiel's Mewtwo. I don't play versus that Terrakion garbage. So that's all I've been testing verse and with. So. Okay. Feeling um, like confident, baby. Got to win those three rounds. <laughs> Good. Uh, what about you, Pram? Uh, I test versus every... I basically do everything versus everything for the most part. Um, just to kind of... Because I don't know what I want to play. And if you don't know, you have to just look at everything and just kind of feels what's best so that's what I've been doing um I I'm much I did it much more spread out than Drew I think I think he's kind of like in cram mode where I just kind of did it throughout like maybe a game here and there a night just kind of thing so uh play TCG helped out a lot um yeah just been practicing good uh Potter I know you play test with Pram a lot um do you have the same kind of testing regimen as him? Uh, obviously not. 
Uh, I mean, apparently not. Uh, I just tested that. Uh, there's one weekend where he came over and we played like 50 games with all the different decks and stuff, and that was like almost all of my testing, if not all of it. I think I played one game since then, but I think about it every day. I know that doesn't get you very far, but it keeps things fresh in your mind. And uh, there's another weekend coming up this weekend, and uh, I'm planning right on there. doing what? It said man after my own heart right there, uh, theorizing. <laughs> yeah. and, and there's another weekend coming up here I'm going to do a lot bef this weekend before the actual weekend so uh, hopefully that's enough uh, I think it will be okay. um, let's see here Woo! <laughs> uh, Kevin Abernathy is asking us if anybody's found out where World 2013 is and I don't think that's been announced yet that's usually announced at Worlds right or am I wrong? Yeah, it's on world. You just have that yeah, you're wrong face. All right. I'm not allowed um, to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dax Edmiston asks, uh, what's everybody's opinion on people that take Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, and MTG so seriously when they start uh, to where they start cheating, using vulgar language, uh, and raging Potter in <laughs> <laughs> and stuff? <laughs> I think all the people that play these uh, games do that because I know there's a lot of people that do. Aw there's a lot of awesome people um, that play these games, and I appreciate uh, a lot of everybody's, uh, a lot of us playing the games and uh, stretching the community. Um, so basically, what he's asking is, people in all card games, um, at least all three major card games, take the game very seriously. People decide to rage out when they lose. People decide to, you know, call people names. People decide to cheat even. And um, and I think that's just the nature of like that's human nature. I honestly think I think uh, I'm not saying everybody does this by any means. I just think that uh, if some people didn't do it, then um, then we just wouldn't really be humans, would we? Uh, some people do decide to you know take that negative approach to the game. Some people take a positive approach where um, they they don't make excuses for losing. They they accept defeat and and they accept it gracefully and they help people get better. Um, I just think that that's that's human nature, and some people are going to be uh, negative Nancy's in a, in a sense. Potter, I, I do kind of want to address the fact that uh, you do have a, sm a slight reputation. I'm not going to say a giant reputation, because the truth is you don't really rage out that much. But you do have a reputation for every once in a while getting a little hot. Um, anything you want to address? Uh, that doesn't happen that often, but um, like I know it happened this year, Top 128. Just because I had, I had such high expectations of myself, and I was so let down by, like, what happened. And that's something I want to actually address and just be more... <laughs> yeah, in your interview, calm. you actually... Uh... I, <laughs> I don't want to be accepting <laughs> of the fact that I lost, but I still want to be just more collected and calm when I lose. Uh, although I, I, it doesn't really happen that often. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, some Losing people or just... Or Everybody has addictions, man. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people have addictions. And one of those is winning. I have an addiction to winning. i got to keep winning. <laughs> hey, must be Tom Brady has an addiction to winning. <laughs> um, all right. That, that's, that's a defense. <laughs> I'll give you that much. It's a defense. Um, you know what? Uh, I, I do know that a lot of people... Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, but I do know that a lot of, people, a lot of prominent players do have this kind of um, uh, this, this problem, um, I guess is the right way to put it, where they do kind of, you know, get really angry when they lose, and they do kind of, you know, take losing personally, and, and I do wish that they would change, but I can understand, and um, I would hope that I personally at least don't, don't do that, at least not very often. Everybody has a bad day, obviously, but... Yeah, let's uh, let's keep the game a little bit more positive. And um, Pram or do you guys have anything you want to mention about this? I think you covered it pretty well. Uh, everyone does have a bad day. Maybe not at Ben Potter's level, but they <laughs> they definitely get mad sometimes. Going to as far as cheating is kind of out there. I would not never do that, but everyone gets mad at some point. It's just the nature of the beast. There's luck involved. Hopefully you keep your cool and don't go Tom Dole's all crazy on someone and throw him across the room. <laughs> so. 
that yeah. happen? Did that ever happen? It happened <laughs> once at a, it was a Harry Potter tournament, but the kid... He <laughs> Harry <out>. Potter tournament. <laughs> he punched out and up shine, so... He had it coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just to get an idea, this kid just punches Tommy you now, where, where we would never yeah. want to be punched as, as a man. Ah. <laughs> it was he was a small kid too and Tom is huge. He's like eleven, twelve years old. Ah. <laughs> Tom used to be bigger than he is now even. And that's that's a yeah, scary like, thought. I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. Man, poor kid. <laughs> that kid learned a lesson, I'll tell you that much. Uh Pram, do you have anything you want to do? Because you also like Potter, uh are known to be get, you know get a little hot from time to time. Yeah, I mean hot. I mean like I'll just walk off, but then I'll like calm down. I, I guess I don't like start yelling or anything. Um, I think in terms so th- that's like just people you know <laughs> uh, people get tensed up. They want to do well, and then it's it's a super downer when it doesn't happen. You know that's just what it is. Just gotta give people some space when that happens. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, as for the cheating thing, you know, cheating's gonna be around. There's no way there's gonna be no cheating in the game. Uh, is people are just gonna do it. Um, so, but luckily, uh, it's in the minority, at least for Pokemon, a uh, huge minority actually. Um, so, you know, just just ki- kind of like watch out for it, but. I don't think it's that big of a problem in Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, cheating's always going to be intolerable, and uh, um, I would hope, you know, any of you guys watching don't cheat, but I uh, I do think that it's it's not as much of a problem in Pokemon, and you hardly hear of any issues of people cheating. Um, that are the really good cheater, <laughs> one or the other. Yeah, we weeded those people so. out <laughs> already before you guys got here. That's true. Um... <laughs> Isaiah Middleton asks, uh, "Will Josue discuss his lot to Matt Moss? His loss to Matt Moss in top four of the 2001 <laughs> Super Trainer Showdown? No, <laughs> no, he will not." Uh, next question, um, uh, Michael Battaglia. Do you think that the winner of the Top Kid Invitational and Worlds will be the same? That'd be pretty cool. Unfortunately, well. that's not able to happen because uh, we're we're not inviting the world champion of this year because they're more likely. Well, he. He's talking about like one of the eight invited players winning the world championships. Mm, no, I read that as hit per same person winning. I mean, like, oh, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, unlikely, but it'd be cool. Yeah, it, it is unlikely. I think. Uh, <laughs> I think that's. It, it's a very unlikely scenario, but um, I think it'd be cool, right? Like, I mean, that would. You can't uh, you can't argue with the guy's legitimacy after Man. he wins two tournaments in one day. Yamato hasn't Ugh. even qualified yet. <laughs> That's true. That is true. <laughs> this guy's winning worlds. Woo! Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Drew. You have a huge road to climb. I mean, let's face it. Being washed up doesn't help. You got to go through an LCQ where you actually can't lose a game, a match. You got to try to beat me. <laughs> you gotta get past that, man. Come on, Drew. Let's just let's just admit it. You're gonna be doing some commentary over the weekend. You're gonna be a pre commentator, though, right? You're gonna put that Rocky music on and climb to the top. Getting strong now. Won't be long now. <laughs> Keep going. I don't know anymore after that. <laughs> Fire. Uh, Potter. Ooh. Potter, what are you? Doing? No, no, no. Speaks to stop now. All right. I'm with my thoughts. I think if I were to pick a group of eight people, these eight people has as good a chance as anybody of winning worlds. I mean, better than anybody at winning worlds. Even Yamato, who hasn't even qualified. Even Yamato, who hasn't even qualified. Uh, But uh, I, I would say. You know what? You know I think somebody there is going to get close, and they might win. I think somebody on this list is going to be real close, and they might even do it. Okay, very cool. Um, <clears throat> Isaiah Rufus, 
says, how do you feel about championship points being given out this year at Worlds, and how do you think it's going to affect the amount of points needed to qualify for, uh, for 2013? So I don't actually know how the point system is going to work for 2013. I don't actually think it's been announced, right? Nope. I don't think if I mean, I, I think they it's announced that it, it might carry over or something like that. It's not no, been announced, nothing, nothing at all? but the way it looks like, it looks like Worlds is going to count for next year's qualifying Worlds. Maybe. So you don't automatically get an invite then? Is that what they're trying to say? No, 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 no. Uh, the top four will still get an invite. But the, you get championship points for attending Worlds. Yeah. But so, like what I'm saying is like 25 points for the winner don't actually count. Don't actually matter. Well, they might take a, take a top 40 spot or top 50 or depending on where they are, where they live. Oh, that makes sense. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, but as far as we're concerned, it hasn't been announced. Um... Sorry if we're wrong, but I don't think we are. Uh, and uh, I'm as interested to see, you know, what's going to happen with this as the next guy. I, I'm confused as to why they would do it. If, I would hope that it has something to do with, like, uh, um, like a, a different, you know, uh, use for championship points. But I don't know. I honestly have no idea. Um, and I'm going to start for this. I think, I think that they're... Sorry. Go ahead. I think that they're going to be added to the totals of championship points people already have. And at the end of the year, after Worlds, they're going to have an MVT award, Most Valuable Trainer. <laughs> kind of like the Player of the Year, except <laughs> championship points. <laughs> Maybe. Um, that's almost guaranteed world champion, though. But, hey, we'll see. Um, actually, I don't think they can do that because, like, dude, number one player in Europe has 80 points. Yeah, that's ridiculous. MVT, man, MVT. He's already the MVP. <laughs> He's already player of the year for championship points, man. Whoa, I thought Drew was frozen. Hey. I thought Drew was frozen for the longest time, and then his, his eyes just moved. No, I, I, <laughs> I, I can see them putting it in for next year for retention. Uh, so players who are really good at Worlds, who do really well, can keep coming back. So there's some sort of retention that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't um, reset completely for these players. Because they have proven themselves to be world worthy. Okay. So maybe yeah, that's like I said. Maybe that's no why. Idea. If if they do add it onto next year's uh, total, maybe that's why they did it. Okay. Um, Kevin Cranberry Murphy asks, "What do you guys think is the cutest card from Dragons Exalted?" Uh, um, Axel. True. I got it. What? I'm last. I'm last. Axel. I gotta go look at the You're looking at the pictures. <laughs> oh, the, the basic man. form of um, it's like a little dragon, man. It's on the TV All show. Right. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm a horrible representative. I think it's like that. Axel. I think it's like called Axel. Uh, uh, like what about you, Ben? Oh, oh man, how can you not say UEX? I'm like looking through the thing and Mew just like pops up at you. Definitely Garbador. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, kind of a, impartial to a Q bones. Those things are cool. <laughs> Q bones, Q-bone. little bonehead. Oh, then Mencino's pretty cute too. Going, ah! That thing's cute. What? How's it going? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Look at the picture. That's what it's doing. I'm looking for an Axel. I still can't find it. Axel? What about you, Drew? Time's up. Um, I like this Fungus. He looks pretty cool. Fungus? And I also like Tim Tim Pool. Look at that face, man. Tim Pool. What is it? Time Pool? It's not cute. It's cute. No, it's not. It just looks like a person's have face. You, have you seen Drew's cats? Have you seen Drew's cats? He calls those cute. So, I they mean... They are cute. <laughs> they are uh, the cutest uh, cats you've ever seen. <laughs> there's no <laughs> Axel in this set. Oh, there's not? Yeah, I have, I'm like <laughs> looking for an Axel. Axel can't find. But you know what I'm talking about, though, right? I just assumed he'd be in the set because it's a dragon. No, I have no idea what you're talking about. No. Um, but yeah, I'm going with Mew X because I'm the only guy with an eye for cuteness, apparently. Um, let's see here. Ugh. All right, uh, Mike Doc says, "How do you think Bobloom's going to do at the World Championships?" Yes, it will do well. 
It will do well. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I would hope so. All right. Um, this can is cute. All right. What's the cat think uh, about Valplum doing well at uh, World Championships? I would think we'll see a few of it in the top cut. Not that many, but a few. You know, I think if it ever has a chance to do well, it's going to be from Swiss to the top cut, right? Like, um, what I'm trying to say is, like, the deck performs notoriously well in Swiss, but it kind of, like, just peters out um, in the top cut rounds. And that's just that's the way the, the Bopplum deck seems to have worked, you know, um, in recent memory. Why do you think that only a few of them are going to top cut? Well, like, a few is in, like, a few here and there, not, like, two. Like, maybe, like, five, if they do a top That's 32. Still, I mean, what I'm trying to say is, like... Why do, you, why do I think you know, it's they'll top shine. Well, what uh, I'm I trying mean, to say is, like, if it's got a chance to shine, it's going to be in the Swiss rounds. Right. So, you don't I, think I it's don't think, I don't well. think that many people will play it. Okay. I, I don't think it'll be that popular of a deck. That's fair. At least among what about the, you? At foreign players. Okay. Uh, what about you? Um, I like Vileplume. I think it's almost underrated. People really, really doubt it two out of three, but I think it's not too bad. Being able to shut off half of your opponent's deck is not is huge. It's huge advantage. Huge advantage. And if you look at worlds compared to nationals, it only has to get through so many rounds of top cut versus nationals. Nationals is a huge number of top cut rounds. It only has to win, was it top 32 on at most? It could even be top 16 and on. That That's not unprecedented in that world. So I think Vileplume is pretty underrated. I mean, look at last year, Ross was able to pilot it to top two, so. I like Vileplume. Woo! Good, I like Vileplume too. Um... I, I think it's going to do well. In, listen, I'm not sure about its top cut. Um, 60 minutes is reasonable, but not enough for it to complete two games completely. I mean, let alone three. Uh, it, it's enough for it to complete two, but three is like... So it basically, if it loses one game, then it's just, in my opinion, going to be eliminated. Um, so, we'll see. Uh, but that's a good question. So here we go. Jack Eiler says, for the tournaments such as... For the big tournaments such as regionals, nationals, worlds. Uh, what do we think of a best of five? Now, I know time's an issue, but what would you guys think of it? Uh, I would prefer for them to just give an extended two by three than, rather than a best of five. I mean, time's an issue, and time is a huge issue with Pokemon. Pokemon takes a lot longer to complete than any other you know competitive card game out there right now. And uh, until that, that part gets fixed, which I don't even know if it ever will, and I don't really think that we're going to be we're going to have the luxury of getting a best of five. I would want them to have a best of five for worlds specifically, um, but I know it's not going to happen, and uh, it would have to be only top eight best of five for it to be reasonable. But I don't think that's ever going to happen, and uh, I think we should try to get more minutes in uh, best of three scenarios because honestly, sixty isn't enough, and forty-five definitely isn't. Um, so I think we should, you know, uh, we should focus our our efforts on on getting something like that done. Uh, but even that, I, I honestly don't see happening anytime soon. But uh, anybody have any other thoughts about this? I mean, the more best of the best of X, the higher the number X is, like, clearly the better player will more likely win that scenario. So, I, I, while I think it's a good thing, there are, yeah, there are, like Krim said, uh, there are things that need to be solved first. Um, now, if time wasn't an issue, sure, I, I would love the, I would love a best of five. Uh, I would love a best of three Swiss. But because time's an issue, then. You know, it's just unrealistic. Uh, at least as as it is right now. Okay. Um, anybody want anything on? Uh, I I kind of don't like best of five in Pokemon. Like Krim said, I would rather see <laughs> like probably 30 minutes a game for 90 minutes, best two out of three. I think when you start playing more games of Pokemon, you're really going to wear down the players. Like, I can't imagine playing a top cut of best three out of five, even from the top eight on. That's it's got to wear on them. It's an incredibly grueling game, especially if, like, two or three of those games go the full six prizes. That's tough. I can't imagine doing that. And I I like two out of three, personally. Hey, man, you guys can start getting into Tom Dozel body. 
at that point. You gotta get that <laughs> endurance. Everyone's gonna be like it's jogging true. like three miles just to prep for a tournament. But Jay would have a huge advantage over yeah. all of us. Um, ben, what do you think? Uh, I think I like best two out of three. I'd like it even better if it was just one game, because uh, make me use less less time beating my <laughs> opponents. So <laughs> you know, the more time I save, the better. You understand how much more you would rage. You understand how much because <laughs> you're undoubtedly going to get turn one, and it would hurt you oh so much more to Never know that again. you don't have a ch- opportunity. <laughs> Start storming out. He's getting angry sitting there hearing yeah. this. I've only you known the table one time, and I was playing oh. Monopoly, not Pokemon. <laughs> you get competitive with Monopoly. Awesome. You would trade um, the old. Dude, Monopoly is actually, like, it's tough. If, uh... The worst. I won that game anyways. If, we reset it up, and I was like, oh, yeah, now I gotcha. <laughs> if everyone knows what they're doing, it's tough. But generally, that's never the case, um, so it's easy. Yeah, um, yeah. for what it's worth, I mean, I'm a very opinionated guy, obviously. I, I think that's no secret, uh, especially with all the top cuts that we talked about. But for me, I personally, I, I would hope that we get 75 minutes, not 90. I think 90 is, uh, honestly, it is too much uh, too much strain on, on on TOs and on kids specifically. Um, but I think 75 minutes is very reasonable, very fair, and that's what I would shoot for. Um, if I was going to be you know, lobbying for this. I think 75 is just fine. I, I do think that it's a little bit short, but it's a lot better than what we have now, and um, and it's a reasonable uh, um, solution to the problem because it is a problem. Um, and I don't like the fact that all these worlds, you know, worlds and final uh, nationals finals are going to time, and you're seeing sudden death game threes. That is dumb. That is bad for the game, um, and absolutely terrible, terrible for the game. And I would like to see that fixed. I would like to see 75, not 90. I think 90 is too much. Um, but I would like to see 75, and I, would, I wouldn't mind seeing 90 at Worlds. Um, but 75 at Worlds, including Nationals. Yeah, I think Personally. 75 is enough. Uh, like, I can't even imagine going over 75 unless it was just, like, two players, like, maybe, which, like, Krim versus Jason or something like that. <laughs> Where yeah. both players are just in the tank. You need two imagine, hours <laughs> imagine a no-time limit match between us. Oh, uh, I'd like bring a sleeping bag with me. <laughs> I'd be ready. But if we could like both an, players. But if you had like a little microphone on your head and it just announces what's going on, it's totally different. <laughs> both players True. just have a Tynamo on the field, and Krim and Jason are just sitting there in the tank. You don't know whose turn it is, but you know it's turn one. <laughs> <laughs> no one's even. Oh drawn, yeah. No one's drawn I, their. I my, no <laughs> one's drawn their card for the turn yet either. Like no, they there. both have the same amount of cards, but you don't know which one Mulligan's. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's funny. Uh, I just recently started playing a, a lot of Magic uh, at a local level. Um, and, you know, I, I may be well known in the Pokemon community, but at, in the Magic community, I'm, you know, I'm just starting off. And it's so funny how, like, boom, <laughs> like night and day, uh, I'm all of a sudden known as the slowest player in, uh, <laughs> that plays these things I'm known as. <laughs> yeah, it takes a sweet time thinking over everything, and everybody, you know, originally was giving me a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, crap for this, and they, they, they eventually learned that this is how I am, that this is honestly what I, what I do, and, uh, how I take my turns, and it, it's funny to see, uh, a new community kind of, like, get used to that with me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I take my time. <laughs> um, but, uh, here we go. Jonathan Crespo. Yo, oh, oh, what do you guys think of the card? And it's potential in Tier 2 and Rogue Ducks. And uh, do you think it'll be open, do you think it'll open the doors for creativity in the next format? So he specifically says, you know, he understands how it may not be Tier 1. But he's saying, how do you feel it'll do in Tier 2 and Rogue Ducks? Tier 2 being competitive decks, just decks that you, uh, uh, you don't consider favorites. Uh, oh, it's a good card, man. I like it. All right. I do not like any. Uh, 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 I don't think like any deck you're playing that's gonna have that many different kind of basic energies is gonna be that good. No, you have to like build the deck around ho oh and then you have to get like. Well, obviously. You, but you get like three ho ohs in the discard and you just start flipping coins until one of them. <coughs> <hits>. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And what do you do? Just super scuba? But it no, still no, only does... It does 80 for 4, oh, right? It's actually... It's, what is, well, oh, oh, I guess you can do a maximum of, like, whatever. Yeah. You can do a maximum of 160. Mm, I think I'd rather just play Mewtwo. <laughs> It's a but this comes, the energy this comes back from the discard. This goes when it's in the discard. You flip the coin, so like you just mill your deck and then go boom flips. And then Mewtwo comes and in and just wrecks it. Hey man, no one said this had to be tier one. This this is like purely like, oh this is so cool. What tier? Look is at me it go. <laughs> deal with Mewtwo. <laughs> clearly tier two and onwards or below. Clearly. Like tier six, yeah, of course. <laughs> I can see a rogue deck. I, I think the only time it would ever actually be useful is if you could find a way to manipulate the energy birds. Move the energy birds. Oh man, I what? just saw a, a picture. <laughs> You'll see it eventually. It's actually really funny. Um. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> um. But yeah, I do think that it would be really cool. And um, it'd be fun to use, but I, I think the only time it'll ever be useful is if you can find a way to manipulate like, the energy cards and like move them from that Pokemon to others. Um, but yeah, here we go. <laughs> All right, and he posts a picture, uh, a picture that I think every or some people would find <laughs> funny, um, uh, and it's on our Facebook page. Uh, let's see. Here. Uh, I think we might have one more question. Let me just make sure. Uh, all right. I'll, uh, I'll ask a couple more questions. Uh, this first one's from Trey, uh, Crowbad Kid Reese. He's asking, are you worried about the people moving up in age? Uh, oh, uh, um, or specifically, Drew, are you worried about Adler, P, and Ty Wheeler? Um, probably not initially. I think everyone needs like a break-in season and 15-plus, I feel like. So, well, they're learning the ropes of the 15-plus, not really, but more into the future as the season goes on, maybe the second half of the season for sure. But they're both quality seniors. Ty just won senior nationals, so, yeah, anything's possible. And I look forward to the challenge, man. Woo! Okay. Um, what do you guys think about it? Uh, potential seniors moving up to the Masters division. Do you guys feel like uh, there should be reason to... So if you're these these kids, or do you feel like Drew's got, uh, Drew just hit the nail on the head? Pretty much hit the nail. All right. Uh, I think there's always reason to be fearful of, of the new players coming in. I mean, you know, there's always going to be new players who are who are good too. But I'm not really afraid of anybody. I'm not really <laughs> worried about anybody. Cause I know I'm the best. So you're like a cocky version of me. Um. Uh, I I think Drew's right. Everybody needs a break-in season. I think the the, the meta game is just like such a huge shift. Unless these kids are playtesting with Masters already, that um they're gonna need like uh one season to really adjust because the meta game is completely different. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, all these SoCal players, a lot of them are very young, and they were in the seniors division either last year or the year before, and these guys are all world class talent. These guys are all uh, people that can honestly do extremely well, if not win major tournaments, so um, I I would be silly to say that you shouldn't fear kids because uh, for some reason I don't know what they're eating, I don't know what's in their water or something. <laughs> These kids are smart, man. These kids are really smart. So, final question. All right, uh, Mike Doc asks, how do you feel about the seniors and juniors that have to travel to so many events to get a world's invite? They at least have to do, get 60 plus points to top, uh, to top cut. How do you think, uh, or do you think uh, they should lower the best for finish limit for Battle Roads and Cities, etc.? Woo! That's a good one. Um, he says juniors and seniors, but the truth is it applies to everybody. But more specifically, and I understand why he's asking for juniors and seniors, because these guys don't have control over any of this. You know, it's their parents that honestly have to, you know, take them to all these tournaments. And it honestly becomes more than a full-time job. Like, it, it becomes a, this is, more, this is more than a hobby, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, this becomes an actual, like, lifestyle choice. And it, it, it's really grueling, and I don't agree with the fact that uh, people have to, do, to attend so many tournaments. Um, I understand that it's uh, marginally, well, it's different. It's different from the, 
the ratings invite where people could, you know, say, oh, no, I'm just not going to play any more tournaments because I have my rating invite. I understand that people wanted, that they were trying to get people to actually complete tournaments. But you don't want people to have to, you know, break the bank on having to, you know, get their kid to, uh, to nationals and worlds, uh, or to worlds. Um, I'm, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm very adamant about this. And, uh, like I said last week, uh, I, I could go on and on about this, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hold back. I'm gonna hold, hold back for now, and I want you, I want to hear what you guys have to say. I know uh, Drew and Potter both actually touched on this last week. Uh, do you guys want to mention anything before I uh, set it to Bram? Yeah, I just feel bad for those kids. For the kids, they have to burn out. Man. People have to burn out, man. You just can't keep playing Pokemon every weekend. Just it seems like this is such a quick shift too. Like even like two years ago, there was only one regional, two states, and there was a month it seemed in between every big event to suddenly like shift over to every weekend. One second, it's so fast. Yeah. Audio's choppy again, Bram. Is there anything that we can do to fix it? Yeah. Why don't you just type in chat, man? Yeah, dude. Because he might stop. He might not stop. I'll stop. All right, Here we go. So, you should. I, I did it. I fixed the thing. All right, go for it, Drew. Sorry about the interruption. All right. So I said, it's a quick shift about face from a couple seasons ago when there was, like, an event every month. And, yeah, I just... We're spiraling out of control. Now we got three regionals. Next is going to be four. Four states. It's going out of control, man. I'm not regionals big every weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You imagine that, man. Um, Potter, anything you want to add on? Uh, yeah, I think this should definitely lower the best finish limit for Battle Roads. Uh, six or eight, it would just make them worth way like more. Uh, it might change a little bit now that Battle Roads is only Swiss rounds. But uh, the more tournaments they create, I actually do think it's worse for people having to travel all these tournaments. I think the juniors, in order to get an, a rating invite this year, you had to get 70 championship points in North America, and for seniors, I think it was 57, which is, that's like both higher than Masters. Uh, I mean, I understand, like, the top tier is probably much better than the lower tier, but you still have to keep up with all those different people, so you have to go to all these tournaments, and imagine having to get 70 championship points to get an invite to Worlds as a junior, that's... That's a lot of traveling, and that's that's almost just ridiculous. I wouldn't say almost. I think it is ridiculous, um, and uh, I I totally agree that it's just too much, and they need to they need to cut down the best finish limits on everything. Um, in my personal opinion, something like yeah, give a, give everybody three regionals and everything like that, but have one regional count and two states count, or three total combined, and something like four cities and four battle roads. Simple. Um, yeah, you're going to have to perform extremely well at these tournaments, but you know what? You have a lot of opportunities if you really want to take the game seriously. And um, if somebody that performs extremely well at regionals and states just uh, happens to do that, they shouldn't be forced to go like, well, I won states, I top eight at states, I top four at regionals. Now I have to keep going to these because uh, apparently I have to keep this up in order to actually be able to hit all the best finish limits. So I, I do agree. That that's that would be a better, a very good solution and uh, an immediate solution. Um, Pram, what do you think? Uh, I, I think um, definitely the best finish limits is where the solution is. Um, just like because just making it so where you don't have to go to every battle road if you don't want to, making it um, so you don't have to go to every city. Like I know some seniors were going to like two, three marathons. It was like crazy. Um, and, like, they were all get racking up, like, the 30 points from cities. It was kind of, like, ridiculous. Um, I do think if they put more emphasis on the bigger tournaments, like regionals and states, and, like, redirect points towards those, like, maybe say they're worth more, but there's, like, the same best finish limit or something like that, uh, it'll be fine. Because it's, like... Where you're traveling, like, to, like, say, 20 places because of all the cities and battle roads you had to go to. You're now you're only going to, like, six. It just cuts down on a lot of travel. Because um, it, it's just a hard balance to work out between how much someone should be should be able to play uh, 
what's the minimum and maximum they should they should have to play to get an invite. So it's a hard balance, and you know this year was a uh, a kind of a test year to see how this would play out. They've clearly recognized. I mean, like if they didn't, they're just like I don't know where they're looking at. But like well, they added more tournaments instead of taking some. I know ways, they uh, added more tournaments. I don't know if they recognize it yet. That doesn't mean that they're going to allocate the points the same way. It, it is, that's what it comes down to, actually. It's not how many events; it's where the uh, which events count the most. So, like, maybe Battle Roads won't be worth any points. Who knows? Maybe it'll be like worth one, just for the winner, or just for the top two, and then like, maybe you there's like a best limit of like four or two, right? Okay. I mean, like, it, it it's all it's all gonna be depend on uh the best finish limits and what their championship point system is for the upcoming year. So hopefully it's uh, favorable for junior, the parents of the juniors and seniors. Uh, I know that you guys had to like travel to way too many events that you guys didn't want to go to that many. So uh, hopefully you, they'll hear your they'll hear your uh, your cries and uh, help you guys out. Yeah, I've always like I've always thought about it and uh, I've always figured I really want to be a poker parent. I really want to be one of those guys that. You know, takes his kid and teaches him about Pokemon, and you know, helps him, you know, enjoy the camaraderie about, you know, that Pokemon really brings to him and everything like that. And then now I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, dude, I'm gonna have to be like a millionaire to be able to afford being a Pokemon. <laughs> that's not gonna be, uh, that's not gonna be any fun, man. Um, so we'll have to see if I can make first of all millions of dollars. Second of all, if I can make days, and uh, we'll have to see if the uh, if Pokemon's still around because I really <laughs> think it'd be cool. So lots, lots of things have to happen for me to be a Pokemon parent. Um, either way, this is uh, this has been the final episode of the Top Cup before the World Championships. Like I said, couldn't be more excited about Worlds. This is going to be the part where I talk about, about Twitter. Um, can't stress it enough, guys. Join Twitter if you don't already have it. Please, it's going to be huge for Pokemon. Uh, the best thing that you can do for Pokemon, in my opinion, um, is join Twitter and help it grow that, that way. The community is great. The, the the fact that you can you know just send out a quick uh, hundred character tweet and let the let the whole world know what's going through your mind, and then people can just chime in. Really makes for a great environment. And um, we all have our twitters right there. Mine's at crims23, and Puka's is at Puka311. We have at Topka Pokemon at Michael Pramalot at Drew Holden and at XGWH. Please follow us. Please uh, start tweeting. Can't stress it enough. Um, Good luck to everybody going. Good luck to everybody else queuing. Take uh, take um, Mr. Potter and uh, Mr. Holden to the cleaners. Woo! I'd appreciate it. Uh, good luck and have some fun, guys. I'll, uh, I'll be watching the sidelines. Woo! Anybody else? Uh, we'll sure. go with uh, Potter. Say your goodbyes. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks for having me on the show again, guys. Uh, uh, thanks to everybody who watched tonight. Uh, the show wouldn't be possible without you guys. And, uh, yeah, like like Krim said, keep using Twitter. Twitter can be huge. Make Twitter so popular. Pokemon makes Twitter a Pokemon. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think about that one for a second. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Drew? Yeah, follow us on Twitter. Uh, I'm going to be live tweeting my... Grinder results, unless I'm losing, then I'll be swimming with the jellyfish. But, yeah, follow me. I'm the best tweeter. We've all established this. Let's get some moves into your week. And take it away, Pram. <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> your week. It's good. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Michael Um, uh, Our lead on Krim is slowly falling. I think it's because I wasn't right. on last week. So, yeah, I'm sure um, that's what it was. You know, hopefully we can regain our lead. Uh, let's see. And then I guess I'll just do like normal shoutouts. Um, you know, I'm going to Worlds next next week. If you, you guys want to say hi, come meet come meet me, come meet Drew, come meet Ben, uh, come meet Kyle. You know, we're always uh, ex- pumped up to see you guys. And um, Watch out for watch uh, for updates on the Top Cut Invitational. We'll we'll try and stream it if we can. If not, then um, you know, we'll we'll at least record it. 
same thing with Worlds. We'll definitely be aiming to stream it, but, you know, things may not go out so well, so at the very least, we'll just do as much as we can. And, um... Yeah, just keep uh, keep uh, looking out at our Twitter page. That's where we're going to be posting a lot of our updates, like results. Um, if any content we do, it'll definitely go on Twitter. So I encourage you all to make Twitter accounts, just at least for that. And while you're at it, you might as well just follow me too. Um, <laughs> and Krim, I guess. And all of us. So, yeah, that's. I think that's it. Um, thanks for watching, guys. And... Uh, I, I don't think there's going to be a show next week, so see you guys after Worlds. Yeah, this Worlds. is the final show before Worlds. Yeah, see you guys after Worlds, and uh, have a good Take one. Easy, guys. Peace out.